And then number three, you've got to learn how to receive strength and encouragement from others. From others. Some are just too proud to admit it. But you know, Paul understood that every believer needs people around them, others to encourage and strengthen them. And some would say, well, you know, Pastor, I'm good. I've got the Word of God. Well, good. You need to read it then. Hello. Now, you can encourage yourself from the Word of God. That's true. David encouraged himself in the Lord. It's possible to receive encouragement from the Word of God. But if you'll dig a little deeper in the Word, you'll discover that God meant for us to live in community. That means with one another. Amen. Amen. And so and so Paul understood that these believers in Thessalonica who were going through this trial and test of persecution and the difficulties, Paul said, listen, I'm not just going to send them a word. I'm going to send them a person. So he sent them Timothy, right? 1 Thessalonians 3.2, he said, we sent Timothy, who is our brother and God's fellow worker in spreading the faith, in spreading the gospel of Christ. And what was Timothy's job? To strengthen and encourage you in your faith. I want to tell you that, that I have been strengthened and encouraged in my faith by the brothers and sisters of Fountain of Life. Come on. And that's why church is so important. A lot of people think that the, and I heard this the other night. Where, I don't know where I heard this. Uh, who was I listening to? But the power doesn't come in rows. As we sit in rows, the power of God comes in circles. That was at Celebrate Recovery. It comes in circles as we we gather around each other and we strengthen one another. Come on. And I'll tell you something. We've got to understand that Sunday school is important. Come on. Fellowship with other believers is important. Celebrate Recovery is powerful and important. And I believe that every single Christian, you need a telephone number or two or three in your life your phone that you can pick up at a moment's notice and say sister, brother, will you please pray for me? I'm going through something right now. I need encouragement. I need prayer. I'm being tempted. The devil's after me. Whatever it is. And let me tell you I don't care who you are. Everybody needs encouragement. Come on. Pastors need encouragement. Elders need encouragement. Come on. So here's a question. Who is God sent to strengthen your faith? You might think, well, man, I went through it all alone. Nobody ever called me. I had to do it all alone. Well, let me ask you a second question. Did you come to God's house and open your mouth and say, you know something, I'm going through something, and I really would like for some people to pray for me today? Oh, my, 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 my. Even Paul who wrote one-third of the New Testament, had visions, uh, you know, was taken up to the third heaven, had these visions that were so great, God had to give him a thorn in the flesh just to keep him humble. Even that very Paul said these words in the book of Thessalonians. He said, brethren, pray for us. Let me tell you something. Those are some of the most powerful words that you can say to another brother or sister. Would you pray for me? Would you encourage me with your prayers? Come on. And sometimes it's one when the phone rings amen and you're going through something and God leads someone to call you oh that's happened and it's great and it's wonderful but there's other times when the impetus is on you and me the scripture says this is there anybody sick let them wait for someone to call is that what it says No, it says let them call for the elders of the church. Come on, it's okay to say man, I need some encouragement I'm going through some stuff today amen And let me tell you, if you need encouragement, don't go around the negative ones. Hello. Well, run from those people who constantly speak doubt and unbelief, right? Find your faith. And and because I've got a a powerful statement I want to give you today, you can write this down God can supply whatever your faith is lacking. Oh, I like that. God can supply whatever your faith is lacking. 1 Thessalonians 3.10, Paul says, Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking. 
lacking in your faith. I don't know what your faith is lacking. It might be that you need a spiritual touch from the Holy Spirit at an altar. It might need that you be that you need a promise from His Word. It might need be that you need someone to listen to you and validate your feelings. It might be that you need to hear some hope, words of hope in a hurting world. It might need that you may even need to be pointed towards heaven and the hope that there is a place where there is no more tears and no more sorrows and that life on this earth will soon be over. Come on. It may be that your mind needs to switch over and think upon the good things, but I'm here today to proclaim to you and declare to you by the Word of God that whatever your faith is lacking, God can supply it to you. God can give you the Word. God can give you the encouragement that you need. Can we give Him a big hand of praise today? Amen. And number four, Remember that when you stand firm, it strengthens and brings joy to others. When you stand firm, it helps others. This faith is about community. And this is an incredible chapter because it shows the true power of the body of Christ. Believers who deeply care about one another. I don't know, I just like that picture. It just caught me, I don't know. I thought, look at those kids. What are they looking at? And look at this lady. I don't, I don't know. I don't often do that. But I'm going to tell you, a lot of people think that their spiritual life with God is a personal thing. Just between me and God. No, it's not. It's a community thing. Because by your presence and your, or uh, excuse me, by your absence and your unconnectedness, you can make an impact. Or by your presence and your connectedness, you can make an impact. Amen? Amen. Who you are, and it and, 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 and doesn't matter whether you're, you know, how famous you are or how humble you are. I want to tell you a great story. It's a true story. How many of you have ever heard of a pastor by the name of David Young E. Cho? Dr. Cho pastors the largest church in the world. I know some people think Second Baptist is big. It's a baby compared to, to Yoido Full Gospel Church, all right? But anyhow, all that being said, there was a moment in Dr. Cho's life when his faith needed to be rebooted. It happened. Circumstances around him got to him. I heard him tell this in his own voice. He was building at what is now their, their church facility. It's a very large facility. And at the very moment when construction had began and the crews were all there, the economy of Korea tanked. It fell. The value of, I don't even know what kind of currency they have, dropped. Runaway inflation, difficulties ensued. It wasn't very many days, not weeks, but very many days after that when he had to stop construction on the building. Everything ceased. There was no money to be found anywhere. It was a very difficult scenario. He held on to his faith, trusting and believing for several weeks, but it seemed impossible as he looked at the circumstances. This great man of God lived in a tall apartment building there was a balcony, and he thought to himself, I'm going to go out to this balcony, and I'm going to throw myself off the balcony because he was in such despair. But almost immediately as he thought, thought he said, no, if I do that, uh, it'll be all over, all over the paper, all over Korea. That uh, you know, All of my people will follow me in the same way. He said, I cannot do that. So not knowing what to do, he said, I'm just going to go over to that empty building that's just a shell with you know, no workers working, and I'm going to pray. So that's what he did went over, and he got down in the middle of that place, and he just began to pray day after day. A few people heard the pastors in the building praying, and many people started packing that place and coming out and pray, until pretty soon there was a great, uh, large group of people who were praying in there every, at, at every moment. And finally, the most humble member of that congregation, and this is why I love the story, because let me tell you, one person's faith can encourage another. Amen? One person's faith can cause everybody else to stand up and say, you know something, that's the real McCoy right there. This little lady who lived on the street, who didn't hardly have anything, brought the cup and saucer that she ate in, that she carried in her backpack, brought that to Dr. Cho, 
and gave it to him and said, Sir, I would like to give this to the church because I know that it can be sold for just a little bit of money. And God's going to build this church somehow. And when Dr. Cho saw her faith, something began to happen. And it wasn't just Dr. Cho who saw it. A businessman saw it. He said, I'll buy that. And he gave a large amount of money that day to buy that. From there, the word spread all across that congregation. People began to sell things right and left. And it wasn't long before the construction was rolling again. And today, that church has a tremendous testimony as the healing center, as the power. God, come on. What I'm trying to tell you today is if Dr. Cho needed his faith to be encouraged, can't we say to one another, look, I need something to help encourage me as well? Amen. Amen. Paul started out the encourager. And guess what happened to Paul? He wound up being the one that got encouraged, right? 1 Thessalonians 3, 7 says this. He said, therefore, brothers, in all our distress and persecution, we were encouraged about you because of your faith. And notice this great statement he says. He says, for now we really live since you are standing firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? I'm just here today to tell you that when one believer stands firm, it has an impact on all the rest of the believers. Amen? When one believer says, I'm going to believe God, amen, it encourages all of us. And I, I think we've got to thank God for those who are like rocks. Come on. How many of you know some people in your life, amen, their faith is not easily moved. Amen. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. Let me tell you something. They continue on. They have a good word. It doesn't matter if things are up, things are down, things are going sideways. None of that matters. All that matters is who God is and what He's able to do and what His word is promised and they're not moving. They're standing firm. That's the kind of faith we need in 2020. That's the kind of faith that God is calling us to. Amen. A, 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 a faith that is not easily moved. And I want to end with this last verse. I think it's my life verse. Amen. I've got two coffee cups with this on it. And I enjoy both of them. Amen. It says this. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast immovable I like that steadfast immovable always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain amen that's what God is calling us to today amen would you stand with me today